Hey I'm Max and almost a year ago I made a video comparing Unity to Unreal Engine. I went over multiple points about their workflows, how simple they are to use, how many built-in features they have and things like that. I also quickly touched on performance but I didn't go very in depth with it because my conclusion anyway was that both are good. And I said to use whichever you wanted so I didn't think performance was a huge issue. But looking at the comments, many people were disappointed about that. Many also pointed out that I didn't use the newest Unity version or try out Dots. Dots is a new Unity package that uses data-oriented programming rather than object-oriented programming. And this basically allows for CPU caches and speeds up the execution of the code, especially when looping through a lot of entities. I also didn't try C++ in Unreal Engine, so in this video, I'll try to compare the performance of Unity and Unreal Engine using Dots, C++ and try to do different tests to test out different features. First, I'll test CPU with physics and collisions, and then I'll do update calls and NTT looping with and without Dots, and also with Blueprint and C++ in Unreal Engine. I will also test the GPU by rendering high poly static meshes and also moving meshes. Some people also said to do the test in built, not in the editor, because the editor reduces the performance, so I'll do that too. You can check the description for my computer specs if you want. Let's get started. For the first CPU test, I will spawn cubes at a random location with simulated physics including collisions, so each cube will move with its own linear and angular velocity every frame and collide with other cubes. This will test the CPU performance of physics simulation and collisions. I also added code that will set the velocity of each cube to go towards the middle every 2 seconds to make sure that they stay in frame and keep colliding. First, let's try with Unity without dots. I simply create a cube game object and add to it a rigid body and a box collider. Then I add a script to it that set its velocity to go towards the middle every 2 seconds. Finally, I added a spawner and a display to show the total count. Now I can play the game and the cubes keep spawning and going to the middle. They collide with each other and make a ball in the middle. Now I just have to build the game and run it for optimal performance and the results are pretty good. A lot of cubes are spawning and I still have very good performance. I'll stop recording to avoid lagging the game by recording and I'll screenshot when I get to 60 and 30 FPS. So the game actually ran pretty well until around 3000 cubes, then it quickly went down to 60 FPS around 3480 cubes, and then quickly down to 30 FPS around 4140 cubes. After that it pretty much froze. Then I tried optimizing a bit, instead of putting a script on each cube to set its own velocity, I made one script that iterated through all of the cubes and set their velocities. However, you can see the result is not as pleasing because the cubes all change direction at the same time. So this did help a bit allowing 60 FPS at around 5100 cube and 30 FPS at around 6000 cubes. But because the cubes all change directions at once, there wasn't as many collisions so it kind of defeats the purpose. So let's keep it with each cube having its own timer. Now let's try with dots. The code does the same thing even though it looks pretty different. And that's because Dots uses a different way of programming, so the code looks different. You can see pretty much the same thing is happening. The physics might be a bit different because Dots also affect the physics system. Okay, so let's see the crazy amount that we can get using Dots. And what? Only 1300 cubes. I tried updating the ECS to 1.0 and there was no improvement at all. I guess Dots isn't very good at collisions right now. But keep in mind that it's still in very early beta, so it will be improved and fixed later, I'm pretty sure. Let's try Unreal Engine 5. It looks like 60fps is reached around 1000 cubes, and 30fps around 1560. I also tried using C++ classes instead of Blueprint, but since most of the cost is collision and simulation, it didn't change anything. But at this point, I realized that the way I tested things might not have been fair. I can't look just at the FPS for a CPU test because Unreal Engine by default has more advanced lighting and graphics, so its FPS will be lower. If you look at the CPU utilization of both, 
you can see that for the same FPS, Unreal Engine has a lower CPU percentage used. So let's try instead to screenshot at the same CPU percentage used. I also doubt that the temperature will have time to rise, but I'll leave a few minutes idle in between each test just to make sure. With Unity, you can quickly see the CPU usage go up and up, reaching 40% around 2300 cubes and 60% around 2900 cubes. It bounced a lot up and down, I can't record it because that would mess up the results, but I could see it go up and down a lot. But after 4000 cubes, it never went under 60% again, and eventually kept going up and froze. Unreal Engine, however, never really went above 30% CPU usage. Even went down to 5 FPS and with a few thousand cubes, the CPU usage was still around 20 to 30%. I am curious what makes the FPS fall so much if the CPU usage is so low. My guess is that Unreal has all the simulation and collision on one thread, so it cannot use the full CPU just for that. So I guess if physics collisions are the main part of your game, Unity might be better. Otherwise Unreal might be better because Unity uses more CPU, and as long as you don't have thousands of objects simulated, Unreal should not lag. Let's move on to more useful things like code CPU usage. The way I will test this is by having a bunch of cubes, but this time with no physics simulation or collision. The cubes will get all of the other cubes in the map and get the average direction of all of them and then add a random offset to it and then go in that direction. It will do this every frame, so for every cube, it will look at every other cube. This will mean that each cube we spawn should multiply the amount of operations. Let's start with the basic Unity again. Okay, so 60 FPS around 400 cubes and 30 FPS around 500 cubes. That is not bad considering that 500 cubes checking 500 other cubes mean 250,000 checks every frame. Let's try Unity dots. This should be the strongest point of dots, so I'm expecting a lot. And wow. Still 100 FPS after 850 cubes. 60 FPS at 1,140 cubes. And 30 FPS at 1,560 cubes. Amazing. 1,560 cubes means around 2.4 million entities being looped over every frame. At 30 FPS, that's 73 million entities being looked at every second. So DOTS increases the amount of objects you can loop over by around 10 times, while keeping the same FPS. That's amazing. Let's see how Unreal Engine 5 compares. As expected, Unreal Engine blueprints were terrible. 120 cubes at 60 FPS. And then 180 cubes at 30 FPS. Blueprints are made to be easy to use and set values and execute a few things maybe on start or on click of a button. They are not made to execute millions of operations per second. Using C++ however, speed things up a lot. 60 FPS at 520 cubes, 30 FPS at 760 cubes. So it is a bit better than normal Unity, but still way lower than Unity dots. All of the tests also kept a low CPU percentage, so I'm guessing here the limiting factor is not the actual CPU power, but rather the time it takes for the CPU to go get all of the data in memory. That's a very important note because it means that the time saved by using Unreal Engine C++ or Unity Dots will be saved no matter the power of the CPU used. So even if you have an amazing CPU, changing from Unreal Blueprint to Unreal C++ or Unity to Unity Dots will increase the FPS of the game. That's amazing. That's also a very important factor for things like pathfinding and pretty much anything that happens every frame. The last thing I could test when it comes to code and CPU is running a lot of code on only one object. But that would be useless because the thing we test with the engine's performance is going through many entities. Testing on one entity alone would be a test of C Sharp versus C++ more than Unity versus Unreal Engine. The point was to see how good the engine is to run all of the updates, all of the physics, all of the collisions, every frame to see if the engine is optimized for that. 
In conclusion, for looping and code execution, it looks like Unreal Engine 5 blueprints are the worst, followed by Unity Basic, then Unreal Engine 5 C++, and finally Unity Dots is by far the king. Keep in mind also that Dots is still in beta, so it can still get a lot better. Now for the GPU graphics test, I'll try static meshes and skeletal meshes. I'll spawn them until the FPS drop like before. So I tried with 10,000 polygon meshes, but even after 500, the FPS didn't drop at all. So instead, I found a mesh with 153,000 triangles. I started spawning them in rows in Unity. 33 meshes still allowed the FPS cap at 144, and only 60% of GPU utilization. 53 meshes increased the GPU to 100%. 85 meshes got me down to 100 FPS and 147 meshes down to 60 FPS. I also tried Unity Dots because it has a new graphics package, but nope, 92 meshes at 60 FPS, that's worse. I guess just like physics, the graphics package might not be quite ready yet. Then I tried Unreal Engine 5 without Nanite enabled. This was surprisingly bad. 60 FPS with 24 meshes and 30 FPS with 48 meshes. I think Unreal Engine has better lighting by default, so that doesn't help, but it's still terrible. However, Unreal Engine 5 has a new amazing feature called Nanite, which groups triangles together and modifies them in real time depending on camera distance, line of sight, to basically only render what you can see. Using this, I can spawn virtually unlimited meshes and stay capped at 120 FPS. I went up to 1000 meshes with no issues. I kept going up to 6000, still capped. Unless I got very close to them, it went down to around 100 FPS, which is still insane considering I'm standing very close to a lot of static meshes with over 150,000 triangles. With Nanite, Unreal Engine is unbeatable, by far. But let's be honest, in games, there are a lot of static meshes like this, maybe rocks, houses, things like that, but there is also a lot of moving meshes like characters. Let's try spawning a character mesh around 10,000 triangles and looping an animation many times. With Unity, we get surprisingly good results, 120 FPS with 630 characters and 60 FPS with 1,380 characters. Sadly, right now, Dots does not support animations, so let's move on to Unreal Engine, that reaches 120 FPS with 286 animated characters, 100 FPS with 400, and 60 FPS with 790. So it looks like Unity might be slightly better, but let's not forget that the default lighting for Unreal Engine is a lot better than the one in Unity. So the FPS might be lower, but the quality is higher. Also, Nanite doesn't support skeletal meshes right now. However, you can use Nanite to attach high poly static meshes to a skeleton. So depending on what kind of character you are doing, you could still use Nanite for things like armor, weapons, pretty much anything that won't bend, stretch or anything like that. So if you have a lot of those on your characters, you might still end up with a better result using Nanite using Unreal Engine than you would in Unity. So I think I've done all of the possible tests now. Here is a recap of the results. Keep in mind that these results are not extremely reliable because it is hard to test two different engines on the same thing because they all have different features and settings. For example, Unreal has better lighting by default. And also, for example, when I did the cubes, it was hard to try to match the velocity towards the metal on both engines because they don't use the same units and the same force. It also wouldn't be fair to turn off things like lighting because lighting cost is a big part of the cost of rendering meshes, so the results will not be very accurate. It also kind of sucks that Dots isn't completely ready to compare everything, but I'm glad we could at least see a bit of its power when it comes to looping over entities. When Dots is finally completely ready, I'll definitely try it and make a video about it. Also, keep in mind that performance is not the only important thing when deciding which engine to use. Workflow, built-in features, coding language, portability, file sizes, there are a lot of other important things too. Most likely none of you watching now are going to make a game with a thousand cubes moving around, 
are with hundreds of static meshes with 100,000 triangles. So for 99% of use cases, both engines are perfectly fine to use. I still think this was interesting to look at. Thanks for watching, feel free to like and subscribe for game dev content.